All right, after this stain is good, um, it's now time to cut off the, the top. Uh, a lot of people wonder why we glue everything together um, and later cut it off, but we're actually cutting it off a little bit more so we have a lip when we open it up. Okay, so this board here is acting as a fence and it's set so that the uh, blade will cut off um, enough so you have a little bit of a lip when we open up the box and gives you some space to put the hinges and stuff like that. Um, what you want though is you know, find the top again and put the top against the fence. And then as you're cutting it's going to cut all the way through. Now the blade when it first starts cutting um, is going to be going through not only you know, the, the, the side but this entire five inches of wood here. So it's going to take a little bit of time for it to cut through that. But once the blade gets you know, through the, that wall you're going to notice it's going to be a lot easier to cut until you get to the end here and then all of a sudden it's going to slow down again and, and uh, so just know that that's why it's doing it. Okay. Now I made this right here, this is kind of a, a push stick and it's going to go on here like this and you're going to be able to push it through. Yeah you could just push it through like this but that's you know five inches of blade exposed there and it would come out really close to where your thumb is and I just want to make sure we're being extra safe. So this is going to help you push it through. Make sure you're, you're pushing it not only forward but against the fence. So bring it in this way and forward at the same time and always keep the, the box against the fence. Alright, so here we go. Wait for it to come to a complete stop before you remove it. Okay. Let me open it up. It should have, you know, some dust inside of it and clean it out. Now we have the box and as you can see, we have a nice lip here. All right. Okay. So, I don't want you to use the belt sander to sand this down because it's getting less and less to hang on to especially the lid. If you ever tried to hold on to that while it's on the belt sander you would definitely run into some issues with safety. So we're going to use this method to uh, sand the, the edges here. So you know as you can see that the bandsaw leaves some rough spots and you know some splinters and we'll just sand it all down. Just put it flat down on the table both hands and just move it back and forth tell you like the way it looks. Right. After you're done with that step, you'll most likely have to touch up the inside edge. Just hand sand it. A couple strokes is all you need. Just enough to knock off the splinters. Okay, a little bit on that inside edge there. Not too much because you'll mess up your, your finish. So just go back and forth on all those edges. Just a couple strokes. Do that exact same thing to the lid and then we're ready to put the hinges on. Alright, we want the box to be able to close in the front um, and if you're not careful when you put the hinges on it'll bind in the back and then make it so that when it closes it, it springs open and doesn't ever stay closed all the way. So in order to prevent that we need to make a small gap in the back of the box. And to do that we use a piece of paper as a spacer when we're installing the hinges. So let's go ahead and put the hinges on. Um, this will be one of the last things that we do. So um, one thing you want to make sure is that the vise doesn't have any glue or anything in it that might hurt your box. And we'll put the box in there.
Okay. Now, here's where students run into problems. They'll just throw it in there. And uh, they won't check to make sure that they have the lid on the right way. So really take the time to look at that and make sure that the grain matches. Look at the edge here. You can see the grain comes up and then shoots back over. So that looks right. So make sure you really take the time to uh, look at the grain and put the lid on the right way and don't make it reversed. It'll still work but this just looks a lot better when it looks right. Okay, so I want this this side it has these two. I want that to be the front of my box because I really like the look of that grain right there. So I'm going to put that side down and so this is the back side and that's going to be up. All right, to put a space in there, we just use a sheet of paper. Um, we'll rip that in half. Like that. And fold it twice. Fold it once. And then fold it twice. And that just makes a little bit of a spacer. We'll put that in the box right there. So close everything up and then close the vise until it's close to being tight so we can still move things around because we want to make sure everything is flush. We want to fill across here, fill down the sides and fill across the, the front of the box and make sure everything is perfectly flush. So you really want to take your time in doing this. All right, after it's all flush, then tighten it the rest of the way. And we're ready to put the hinges on. All right, so these are the hinges. And I went ahead and grabbed a, a third one just to kind of use as a spacer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that, that third one and uh, put it right there and so it's the exact same as the uh, width of the other hinge across and then we can do the same thing on the other side I mean, and technically you could put these hinges anywhere you want um, that's just one of the things I do to try to make it line up okay so you also want the where the paper is to go exactly right underneath the hinge where it opens and closes. So try to make it you know straight with that. Okay. Now this is what we call a scratch all. Basically it looks like a screwdriver sharpened to a point. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark where the screws are gonna go. So carefully just do one hole, put the tip of the scratch all right in there and just uh, push down and create, you can hit it just a little bit with your hand and create a little indent in there. All right, so we create a little indent and what that does is that gives us a spot for the screw to go. So we have these really tiny screws and a small screwdriver to match. Don't use the big screwdrivers for this. Um, make sure that you know they have a nice good groove for the uh, screwdriver to fit into. Get it in there all nice and uh, put it right in the spot that we made there. Now notice this is going to shift around and move but as we tighten the screw it'll move back to where it's supposed to go. So that's why we make the mark so the screw um, can we make sure the screw goes in the right spot. Make sure you push down on the screwdriver because it gets kinda hard to turn. So push down, make sure the screw the tip of the screwdriver is into the grooves of the screw so we don't strip them out. Notice as we tighten it down, the uh, 
the hinge. So we're going to go until the hinge starts getting in place. So it's, it, now it's a little bit harder to move it. So we know it's pretty tight. Don't over tighten it because you could ruin everything and strip out the wood. All right, now we can still move it, but we want to make it exactly where we want it and tighten it that last little bit so it's not going to move around on us. Now that it's not moving anymore, we can do the other three. Okay, so we'll take the uh, scratch all and we'll put it right in the center and make another indent and uh, another indent and another indent and then put in those other screws. I like to do alternating corners and again make sure you're really pushing down so that the screw doesn't strip out. There we go. Then do the other two. Alright. The best way to hold the screwdriver is to put it right there in the kind of the bottom of the thumb so you can push down and, and grip it at the same time and then go down like that. And then use your other hand to make sure it's you know straight in. So it's pushing down and turning at the same time. Alright, after the hinges are in, we can take it out, remove the paper, and it should close no problem. If you don't do the paper thing, it'll it'll like come down to here and just stay open because it'll close on the back side before the front side. All right, now we're ready for the uh, a clear coat finish. All right, if you want a laser engraving on the top, you want to do that before we put the clear coat on it. Um, it's also good to do it after you stain because then when the laser engraving goes into the wood, it cuts into the where it's white again. So. Anyway, um, so I'm just going to keep this plain, keep it simple, and uh, I'm just going to put a clear coat on the outside using lacquer, okay? Um, before you do that, make sure you blow everything off, make sure all the dust is out of there, and uh, usually people would put this clear coat on before the hinges, but I like to make sure all the parts don't get lost, especially when you have a lot of students doing this. So we're going to lacquer over the hinges, it's not going to hurt them any. Alright, now there's a specific order that I like to, to do this. Um, I like to lacquer the top and the back and just do those two surfaces. And then you carefully open it up without touching those two surfaces, open it up like that and then you can spray the bottom and the side the back I mean actually that's the front but the other side and then this part right here um, don't spray this again because then you'll get more right here than in here Always, mainly you just want to make sure you at least spray the back and most of the top before you open it up because once you open it up you can't spray in here because it gets covered. So do those two surfaces first and then open it up and do everything else. Now this is usually one of the first things that the uh, students lacquer so I'm going to go into detail on this part. Um, this is the gun. Okay, Down here this knob controls how much air is coming through so don't, don't play with the knobs. If you think something's not working right um, let me know, I'll fix the adjustments, but I want you to know what they do. This knob right here controls how far back the trigger can pull, so basically how much paint can be let out. And this one here, this one's kind of cool, it changes the pattern. Um, you can either have a round or a more oval shaped pattern. 
this controls how much air is being shot out of these side holes and so if you have more air being shot in it makes it more of a, a up and down like a, it fans out more so and that's how I kinda have it, I kinda have it like a nice spray pattern that goes kind of an oval shape so it's a nice fan uh, pattern going up and down All right. Now, when you pull the trigger halfway, it's just air. So don't think stuff is coming out. It's just air. And you can actually use that to blow off the project if you need to blow off any dust. Once you pull it past the halfway mark, then it starts letting out the lacquer. So what you want to do is pull it as far back as it'll go, and that will actually let the, the spray come out. So you can actually see when it actually comes out there. Air and then All right when you pull the trigger a lot of paint comes out so you don't want to have it the gun in one spot and pull the trigger and then start moving because you'll make a puddle of lacquer on the side of the box and it'll start dripping and running down and it just takes forever to fix something like that so what you want to do is pull the trigger when it's not facing the project and then work your way across and then all the way past and then come back because sometimes when you change directions you pause for a quick second and uh, if you do that you'll get a puddle on there so start off the project and work all your way past the project also keep the gun pointing straight at it don't rotate your wrist move the whole entire gun so it's always pointing straight at the project like that okay I'm gonna turn it at a slight angle which I normally don't do when I'm spraying it but that way I think you can get a better view of it alright so let me turn on the dust collector oh and the uh, the gun hangs on this thing right here like that if you try to hang it any other way, if something bad might happen. So hang it by the actual container. Alright, the box should be basically just kind of shiny all over. Um, don't try to put too much on. You can always put a second or a third coat on later. So, there it is. Be careful when you pick it up so you're only touching the bottom. And don't, don't let these touch or you'll get some of these little stringies. I accidentally opened it till it, because it can open and hit right there so be careful about that uh, just put it in the other room to dry make sure you know whose is whose I would before you do this 
put your name on a piece of tape on the inside because a lot of the boxes look the same. All right, here's the box after it's been dried. Um, so now, before putting on another coat, you um, should take some steel wool and buff the whole box with that and uh, then it's ready for a second coat. If you think it's good enough and with one coat then you can just leave it at that. Uh, two coats will make it a little bit you know, thicker, a little bit more glossy. Um, and if you really want more you do three. Don't do more than three. Um, basically this is the finished box. Um, other upgrades would be to put felt inside or to paint it in there and uh, you can use it for whatever you see fit and uh, yeah it's, it's a fun project and uh, fairly simple